today we're going to dive into diodes a bit more. So first of all, what is in, in vivo dosimetry? What do you use for in vivo dosimetry in your clinic? What are advantages of diodes? What is seen to the right and what dependencies do they have? How many diodes do you need? Name your QA procedures when using diodes and why do you have a energy dependence? So some of these kind of answer each other, but sometimes in the exam, you can use that to your advantage. You can look at use other questions or the diagram to kind of help answer the questions that they do ask. So in vivo dosimetry, essentially that's on or uh, inpatient. And examples of using this are fetal dose, if you are doing a TBI or if you're using TSE treatments or even pacemakers. So that's when you would want to use a pacemaker or uh, in vivo dosimetry is going to be on the outside of patients. I think this is better to say it's on patients, not actually inside patients. So what do you use for in vivo dosimetry? That's why we use them. And so you can use a lot of things. You can use TLDs, you can use diodes, you can use OSLDs, you can use nano dots. There are a lot of options for in vivo dosimetry. TLDs and diodes are the most common. MOSFETs are also somewhat common. Just know when you use them and which ones they are. So what are the advantages of diodes itself? So the diodes, the sensitivity is 18,000 times more sensitive than an ion chamber. So if you think about that, that's insane because it only takes 3.5 EV per ion pair, which if you consider that to gas or air, that is 34 EV per ion pair. So it takes a lot less energy to create an ion pair in a diode than it does a gas chamber. That's why it's so much more sensitive. You also don't need any voltage, which is nice. It, actually, if you add voltage, it may actually damage it. And they're, they're pretty accurate. So it is just very convenient, easy to use, and fast. Uh, you get a reading instantaneously. You don't have to add really any factors. You don't need any processing. And so diodes are very nice. So to the right, go, go figure, this is a diode. And we do have different kinds. We have some that are almost look like something that looks like this is rough trying to draw this of uh, some somewhat like a like almost a cylinder type of thing and then other ones that are very flat like this so here are an example of some of the flat ones and so these that are flat are for electrons so you have to think of most of the time they are going to be on FOSS and the, the beam is going to be directly on them. Whereas if you have something that looks more like a little cylinder, that is going to be for photons because you may, using, you may be using IMRT or VMAT. And so they need better laterality when it comes to determining what the dose is. Another thing, TG62 for diodes will answer all your questions. So mention TG62, read TG62, and familiarize yourself with that task group and with the subject because diodes are a device that I think very well could be asked and I think is totally fair game. So the uh, energy dependence is a big deal with diodes and that will determine how many we need. So because of that energy dependence, you need a, a low energy for photons. So that could be six to 10 MV. Then you need a high, you need a separate diode for a high energy photon. So that's gonna be 15 to 18 MV. And then you can just have one electron. And so that would give you three diodes for your clinic. And if you really wanted, depending on the diode, maybe you could have one that does all the electrons or you could break that up into two electro or diodes too. But most of the time you at least need three at bare minimum. So what are the QA procedures with diodes? So this is where you really want to jump into TG62. They discuss QA, what your expectations should be. So you need to do monthly QA, just like you do on everything else. You want that to be plus or minus 2% for your QA. You want your results to be reproducible. You want the leakage 
because that's important. You don't want leakage on your diodes. You want that to be less than 0.5%. You want the DR is dose rate dependence less than 2%. And you also want them to be linear. So if you increase MUs as you irradiate the same diode, you see that there is a linear pattern. So essentially you're reading at 100 MUs should be half that of 200 MUs. So now why do they have energy dependences? And that goes into the fact that we need adequate buildup to shield contaminating electrons. If we don't shield those, not only are you going to get a higher reading, because remember, they are so sensitive with this 3.5 EV per ion pair, any extra electrons or contaminants are really going to change your result and it's gonna make it extremely inaccurate. And so you can't have too much reading or too much shielding or because if you have too much shielding, then you're going to have a low signal. So to have the shielding that's necessary for 18 MV is going to be a lot more than 6 MV. So if you try to use the same shielding, yeah, you're 18, you may get accurate readings and that may be adequately shielded, but then you're not going to get a high reading for the 6 MV because it's shielded too much and you're going to get a low signal that isn't accurate. So that are, that's uh, diodes in general. And so another thing, they also have a SSD dependence because of the dose rate changes with SSD, right? If it's farther away, it is going to have a lower dose rate. And that affects recombination, dose rate. There's also a temperature dependence, which is about 0.5% per Celsius degree. There's also an annular dependence due to just the different transmission thicknesses and backscatters, which is why you need to use a cylindrical one for photons and a flat one for electrons. Also field size, there's a field size dependence. So the sensitivity increases with increasing field size. So no diodes, know why we use them, know what the dependences are, why they're dependent on that. And you will really set yourself up to succeed on any questions they may throw at you in terms of diodes. So if you have any questions, comment below. I'll happy to help where I can and best of luck.